good evening a very good evening to one and all and i'm extremely delighted to welcome you all to yet another episode of our very very popular web series futuristic education these are a web series dedicated to education dedicated to progressive education a joint venture of edudays and amrita vishwa vidyapeetam university to enlighten and empower the education community in the latest 21st century education trends these are let me tell you a city based web series where edu leaders are invited to deliberate upon one of the pertinent issues which is often suggested by the people by the community of educators and this time the city happens to be gorakhpur we welcome you gorakhpur to this episode of uh, our web series on futuristic education and the topic is parent school collaboration i am your host and moderator for today devyani kapoor let me very quickly introduce you to our very esteemed panel for today we have with us miss js kavita from amrita vishwavidya peetam university we welcome you ma'am we also have with us miss preeti chandra principal st paul's school another very uh, popular principal miss rubina sam principal green lawn school she also happens to have her own coffee uh, table show as she told me which is a i think a radio uh, show if i a podcast if i am not mistaken rubina and we also have with us mr tejo jk principal m r jipuria school gida campus gorakhpur do we also have mr martin chohan with us i'm here ma'am hello mr martin mm -hmm. we have a good evening we have with us mr martin chohan director education for project oofc i welcome all of you and since the time is limited we will not wait to begin the webinar and satiate our viewers with this particular episode now uh, we see that as schools across india are now gradually reopening with a steady drop in the covid 19 cases children are very excited schools are excited principals are very excited about resuming their physical classes and meeting their friends and teachers so after coping with you know months of isolation they are going to be back on the physical mode it will be very challenging and i'm sure our principals will agree with me when i say the situation is very uh, challenging where after two and a half years of isolation and, and discipline will become very important parent involvement will also become extremely extremely important so let me also say as you know gone are the days when parents heard from teachers there was an almanac i would say gone are the days though it was only two and a half years back but you know when teachers would write notes and they children were supposed to get them signed by their parents and they would bring it but now when in a scenario parents are there in the virtual class it's very difficult to manage the parent teacher chemistry the manage the synergy between the student the teacher and the parent and school so we will be deliberating today on this particular issue and i'm sure this is going to be something very interesting see what i feel is parents should understand the kind of education that school is intends to give generally most of the time we see parents are satisfied to see their children preparing for to get a degree or some kind of you know accolades in terms of prizes marks etc which will definitely have a great role to play in livelihood very few parents are concerned 
with you see more with overall development ek bacche ki jo puri development honi chahiye aur usme wo he should have all those qualities all those value system so that sometimes takes a back seat when we are pitted against mark and i'm sure perhaps the greatest difficulty the educator has to face is this indifference sometimes of the parents to the wider and deeper perspective of the education i will today begin my very first question which also would be my uh, introductory question and we will begin uh, asking this question the same question will be addressed to all the panelists i would like to ask my esteemed panelists that how much according to you is parental involvement important to build a student's future and in turn how are the parents benefited from this kind of involvement in their child's life so please be re remain to 2 minutes because deep dive we will be doing in our uh, next segment so i would uh, uh, first request ms preeti chandra to uh, speak about uh, that uh, this particular aspect ji thank you devyani a very good evening to all my fellow panelists and all the parents and the teachers who have logged on today uh this is a very apt time to have this conversation actually at the starting of the academic year and usually my first workshop of initiation for the new session is with this topic because we need to make parent understand that when you set on when you enroll your child in the school it's a 50 50 partnership 50% we do 50% you do it's a equal partnership it's a shared risk responsibility the child is a common mission so i would say when you say how much 50% rests with the parent and it is seen in our school over the years we've seen when parents are uh, consistently positively involved with the learning they are part partnering with the school for the education of the child those children not only have better grades they are regular to school they their social behavior with their peers with the teachers is much better we don't have any socially any problems behavioral problems in school with them they adapt very well to the school they feel accepted they feel loved they feel a part of the school my school so that helps in their learning obviously and then they uh, uh are able to these children later on we find they're able to go to uh, colleges and enroll in colleges and further continue their studies because they not only do well academically but they develop good soft skill sets which help helps them to become learners for life so according to me parental important parental involvement is of extreme importance and every parent should be a part of the child's academic journey in school especially now to the second part of that question how are the parents benefited well every parent uh, has dreams and aspirations for their child that's why they put they give them the best education and when you have those dreams and aspirations you just can't leave it to the school you have to be a part of it and when they are involved in the child's journey throughout the school right from kindergarten till grade 12 they know who their child is they have no uh, they know what are the weaknesses of the child what are the positives of the child and they can really guide give them the right opportunity to go and choose a right career path so i think it's a gain gain situation win win situation for parents and for the children i think very well said thank you so much very chris and absolutely right when you said it has to be a 50 50 collaborative uh, initiative really schools and homes should be joint centers of the right education and should in no way be opposed to each other let us hear out what mr tejo has to say about this yes mr tejo good evening devya and ma'am and all the dignitaries principal the dear parents who are there for this part as this is my first webinar with you all so it's a great excitement for me to be a part of this and to give valuable information uh, i just want to add up one point to what preeti ma'am said uh, preeti ma'am you were you are absolutely right for what you said as 50 50 
why i'll say you a reason behind this is because maximum time the students are with their parents we have a time being of around 6 hours 7 hours 8 hours the students are with us so like maximum time where they will learn many other things apart from the normal teaching because nowadays what i was studying years back and what the students are studying right now has a lot of differences we were totally into bookish knowledge we were getting education only from the going to the class being in the class be over there the teacher comes to the class teaches us and just we leave the school nowadays it's not that way nowadays students when they come they come with one intention stating that do my teacher know better than me so they are a bit smart enough than the teachers nowadays they feel in such a way because a child a kid who has just born after 5 6 of months he wants a mobile with him and he is also he or she whoever the child is is very much adverse like uh, to know what all the different operations of the mobile immediately he can go to youtube immediately he can start with searching something and start with the cartoon or start with any of the song so students nowadays have become <coughs> excuse me students nowadays has become much more talented much more active much more bold enough so as ma'am said pretty ma'am said 50 50 i'll make a suggestion like maximum time of the 50% is with the parents so the collaboration between a child between a school like the teachers or the school and the parent is maximum from the parent side so ma'am preeti ma'am uh, i don't know whether you accept this or not but like my point will be not 50% from the parent side not 50 from the school side the maximum from the parent side uh, just some kind of great guidance and moral values from the school side this is what i would like to say for the first part of the question and if this happens if this happens because we as a teacher we as a school are here to mold they are learning everything from the house from the parents they are learning many things the child takes birth he or she learns something the time period he or she be over there he learns something we are here to mold them we are here to make them correct as uh, if you talk about a poem in english the road not taken for great 9th and 10th we have taught many a times so it clearly tells you that there are two different ways what you need to choose we are all aware of it so that bifurcation that clarification is what we as teachers we as schools will do so collaboration between a parent and a school is a must but according to me it will be the maximum from the parent side and some kind of guidance from the school side that's all thank, thank you thank you thank you so much very well said that because i also feel that family is that edifice which holds the whole educational framework together it's you know it's the first step in the child's education journey so uh, yes the school does shape that but the, the first raw material churning happens in the family itself let's hear out thank you so much miss kavita what you have to uh, talk about this i mean uh, i would request all of you to just keep deleting the points which we've already the other panelists have discussed yeah good evening one and all um, yes the question is like parental involvement and in the second part benefit to the parent putting this two things so i think the focus is very clear maybe as educationalists we have administrate people from the administration side here maybe now the question is our parents not taking the responsibility they are expected to take maybe that is the reason we need to have a panel discussion like this is there a gap is that is happening of late maybe we are trying to address the gap here so obviously it's not like a debate between whether it's the school's responsibility or a parent's responsibility uh, gone are the days wherein long back where a parent might be called once in a year for uh, just uh, receiving a report card or somewhere and uh, we don't even like uh, remember our parents visiting our teachers that was a long time gone but today we know uh we talk about women empowerment we talk about like working women most of the time the parents so i'm i'm just talking from a, a moderate side i'm not taking the side of a, a administrator not the parent my view is this now that we entrust our kids to the schools right in the same sense we understand the importance that we give to the administrators at the same time 
are we giving them what they expect from us is the question from the parents point of view the thing is uh, i would like to just quote something it's not about just the intelligence quotients or the education getting marks how stable is a student in the class how is his behavior how is it being monitored okay is it being monitored when the teacher conveys this to the parent how does the parent react to this because as principals are here they may have better experience with more examples on this do parents always be there and be accountable for something when something goes wrong or is the blame being transferred to the schools on this so it's more as ma'am said 50 50 percentage is it practically being seen of late that is again a thing obviously parents were being benefited once they know that it is their responsibility or i would even say more than teachers parents are accountable because they have entrusted their kids to a place wherein most of them being a single child that is where a socializing happens that is where they behave their behavior pattern starts everything and then Oh, unfortunately we are like not even though they spend more hours with us it's it's like no we don't even i'm sorry to say this we don't even find time to observe their uh, behaviors or change in patterns and when the teachers are kind enough to see something and get back to us how serious are we about it so uh here i would just uh, try to say the parents are equally accountable uh, it's not about mm. a ratio of 50 50 or whatever what but then it's so unfortunate it's only when there is an issue there is always it's addressed and uh, it's so unfortunate most of the times it's reflected back to the management of the schools which it's high time that it should change and uh, the second benefit as in part it's they are benefited because they get to know more about their kids through the views of the second parents which who are like teachers so it's more i would say the higher responsibility lies on the shoulders of the parents and they should really understand that the teachers are there to really monitor and help their kids grow thank you right thank you so much as we all agree that it has to be a collaborative effort i would want to now both to uh, mr martin and ms rubina i would uh, would want to not ask because we have a very vast panel and everybody i would want to ask you that uh, during the pandemic right uh, let's look at the situation of pandemic and see that how the situation where the parent involvement increased but what were the challenges that we faced and what is and then maybe what is that road map which you would suggest because we all saw that there were teachers were having a tough time parents themselves were having a tough time and somewhere the student was taking an advantage of the whole situation so let's just bang on look at the pattern yes oh, so can i begin devyani yes Yes, please. Thank you. First of all, it's great to hear all the panelists and very interesting and of course a very important point of view which we have already discussed as discussed by Preeti and other esteemed panelists. Of course, pandemic changed the world for us. It was challenging. We were as educators, as parents on both sides, we were taking up new roles and we were doing things which we had never done before. We were trying to find our way through, and at the end of it, I had a great experience in the school. because uh, while interacting with the parents the extra effort which came in from the parents was really a revelation because before that parents were not so involved they would come just for one ptm not give not be so but this at that moment and me as for me just being a principal as an educator i also got, gave in my 100% that was happening in most of the schools that all the parent, uh, all the educators teachers pe people who are not so comfortable with technology everyone was ready to fight it out and uh, the help came from parents also they were willing to go that extra mile sometimes of course there were few who were you know pessimistic didn't have time it was all bad and some of the students really didn't give put in a lot of effort but where it was happening in a positive way the students had put in a lot of effort lot of effort happened from parents who were not very comfortable from with technology also but they gave in that extra one bit you know let the child learn 
And I saw that happening many a times. And of course, from teachers, every all the educators went through very challenging times because they were trying to adjust every day to new curriculum, new identity, new Zoom link meetings. Some of them were having really severe problems, but they went ahead and did it. And pandemic changed this, this uh, collaboration, which we were doing between parents and uh, teachers, which is the vision of my school first and foremost, became much more, it was more visible. It was much more uh, concrete. The relationship became much more stronger. And of course, it had a few negative points happening on the way that uh, sometimes uh, the feedback was not very positive or there were too many demands on us, on educators from the parent side. But all in all, I found the, as you're talking about the roadmap, I found it a completely joyous kind of an experience to know these parents as people, because we are also like parents and educators. And I've also been very involved in children's education. So this was happening right in front of us. And every day there was a new revolution, new answers, new and uh, new ways coming forward. That itself was building a roadmap. So I have a very positive take on it. Great, Thank great. You. That's lovely that you have a very positive uh, when but we'll also come to the, the challenges. But before that, I would like to ask Mr. Martin that, you know, we've seen this uh, school perspective. From you, I want to know now that as a parent perspective, what uh, was your, I mean, are you a parent, first of all? I would like to, yes, okay. So you, what, what was your challenge? How did you feel that there was a gap? And because we are always talking about the parent struggle, uh, the parents' over-involvement and over, uh, you know, anxious behavior. Let us hear the parent perspective as well. Yes. All yours to you. Thank you so much, Naraji, and good evening, all the panelists. I am a parent, so I can give you insight on that. Most of us will be able to give it here. See, the pandemic was a challenging time for all of us, be it the educator or the parent. There were collaborations that were formed, new collaborations that were necessary to be formed, new understandings that were necessary to be formed. But there were also gaps that were ignored and there were a lot of gray areas that were not addressed. I'm a parent and I also deal with the education at rural level. As a parent, the feedback that was in an offline class that used to go to a teacher and the feedback uh, between the interaction with the teacher and the student, the live bit that was missing. Two years, we were essentially in the dark and uh, whatever little work that was happening in the notebook, we were following that. But that was a big, big, big gap. As far as the rural sector is concerned, a huge number, probably about 80 to 90% children could not even join these online classes during the pandemic. And that was a big challenge, a big gap, which uh, even the government or schools for that matter were not able to fill. As a parent, when we talk about school collaboration, school and parent collaboration, see, it's essential to have an informed opinion. Now, my, the esteemed panelists will agree that if you are, if you come from an educated background, if you've been through the system yourself, it's easy to comprehend what is happening in school. But if your child is a first time learner, what kind of collaboration needs to be formed? Now, these are issues that need to be addressed. As an educated, uh, informed parent, there were few challenges for me, but somebody who's in the village, the kind of parents we are working with, who has not been through a school system himself or herself, would find this extremely out of the context. And this, the context building exercise, the opinion building exercise, which schools and governments should have formed at the rural level was missing. That is my- Thank input. you so much. Thank you so much. We have spoken and we've been talking about pandemic and we really hope that pandemic uh, COVID-19 dies its own death. What we want to talk and my question to Ms. Preeti uh, Chandra is that, you see, let's talk about communication. When parents and teachers communicate 
with one another, they are able to work together towards a common goal. We also know that technologies like texting, emails have made communication between them much more easier. But often we see that the communication is very uh, one-sided in terms, it's very dictative. Like school is dictating, school is sending messages, but when queries from the parents come, then they're seen as tasks to okay, or some recommendations then from the parents that are, it's a very rarity where I've seen that if our parents recommending certain, uh, you know, things. Uh, now my question to you is, there should be what I feel a structured way of developing a communication between the school and parents, which is a very two way. When I say two way, it's not that yes, ma'am, agreed, noted. Mm -hmm. No, it should be a collaborative. Let the parent be involved. So can you suggest? some stages of communication or some ways that could be developed by school in order to deliver an effective communication, but also in, in order to uh, kind of take the parents along while, you know, uh, chalking the trajectory of the child's uh, learning. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, my favorite topic. I'm in the school just doing this, <laughs> building bridges between the parents and the teaching community. So we need to realize that, you know, school is a human intensive enterprise. It's to, it deals with human beings at all levels, students, teachers, parents. So like in any uh, human uh, form of relationship, be at home or anywhere where humans are involved, communication is of prime importance. You cannot survive without communication. So now let's see, so the communication between parent and the principal, communication between the parents and the teacher, communication between the parent and the student themselves, the child, that communication is also needed. So first of all, first and foremost, most important thing, it's the prime duty of the school principal or the school head to maintain a social climate. Social climate, which is welcoming, which is non-judgmental, which uh, allows the parent, irrespective of their background, to approach the school, to meet the teacher, to meet the principal, and have a clear communication. In our school, we have, I always tell the parents, please don't say that you have a complaint. Don't say that. We will not use the word complaint. Just say we have some information that we want to share. Similarly, we are not complaining about your child. Your child is in school, we have observed something. So let me say, I'm providing you information on which you can act. And I will give you support by giving you actionable information. Your child is weak in reading. I will not say your child is weak in reading. I'll say your child is weak in reading. And these are the steps that you need to do to improve the reading of your child. So you can act on it. So first and foremost, most important role is that of the principal to maintain the social climate. For that, the principal of the school should be visible in the school building, always on the rounds, amongst the teachers, see supervising the classes. Uh, he should, uh, the principal should uh, provide infrastructure and facilities to the parents, to the teachers whenever needed. And principal should be vocal in the advocacy, supporting the students. That is very much needed. There should be no criticism as such. Then second is the communication between the teacher and the parent, which is called the teacher outreach program. See, some parents are very natural in communicating. They've been through a school system where they know, know how to communicate, how to present. They are educated. Uh, they can take care of the children. But there are some parents that you need to pull out. You need to pull out from the, maybe they, there's a language barrier. Uh, there's a social status barrier, they feel shy, they feel scared. So teacher outreach programs are very important. It is the responsibility of the teacher to make the parent feel valued, to make the parent feel that they can make a difference by communicating to them what the child needs to do. So this can be done through workshops, through parent teachers meeting, through so many other things. So that communication is very important, teacher and the parent. 
And then there's one communication between the parent and the child. Some children are very open in communication. They're very explicit. I need help, mama, I need help to do my homework and the parent helps. Some children send implicit signals. They will not ask for direct help, but they will show reluctance in going to school and they'll fret. So there the parent should understand that the child is communicating. The child is said, telling you something that he has a problem. So look into it. What is the problem? And then sometimes teachers should, through students, send communication. So like when children start nursery and kindergarten, we want children to talk about, all children do not talk about school. Some talk very happy, excitedly. Some don't like to talk. So what we do is we place in their hands one little activity that they have done so that they can go home and tell mama, tell papa, this is what I did. And then parents can ask a question. So this is another form of involvement. So there's communication. These are the kinds of communication. So an open relationship, welcoming atmosphere is very important. And then we have all the means. We have social media, you have Instagram, you have Facebook schools, you have school websites, you have school diaries, you have WhatsApp group. So technology has enabled communication all the time. So we can't say that, you know, we could not communicate. It's impossible. But we need to recognize how we can communicate and what is the effective communication. All communication is not effective. Don't judge them. They, you know, sometimes, you know, parents, uh, we are in Gorakhpur and we have a lot of villages around. Sometimes, you know, parents bring their children. They are farmers. They can't speak a word of English, but they choose your school because they don't want the child to be in the same predicament as Excuse. themselves. They want to give him English education. So they bring him. So they are involved in their studies. They are bringing that child to you. So they are involved in their education. But as a teacher, I should know that I need to help that parent. I need to guide that parent, maybe extra coaching to the student in school, staying after school hours. So that is the kind of positive communication and collaboration that we as schools need to do, according to me. This, these are very pertinent, very, very important, four important points. And I'm sure that communication has to be very structured. And we need to understand that the background from which the emotional and social background from which the child comes. And uh, very rightly said, Ms. Preeti, that, you know, sometimes parent chooses an English medium school because he doesn't want to let the child be into the same situation and want to change uh, his whole journey. Thank you so much uh, to you. I would now, um, uh, you know, request Mr. Tiju to kind of uh, enlighten us on um, an issue which is, see, while as educators are trying the level best, you know, to, uh, you know, communicate, as Ms. Preeti said, that the kind of community, because sometimes the child, there is a gap between the parent and the child communication. So educators need to understand and bridge this gap. And we see that a positive school climate combined with the relationship of mutually respect can help, you know, professionals, parents, and everybody to work constructively. But this is too good to be real. Most of the time, we see that there is a kind of disagreement that exists between parent and educator. And uh, we may also read that some kind of conflict emerges, which becomes um, in certain circumstances, for example, there are certain rules and regulations which are made for the benefit. And the teacher is the representative of the school. The teacher is conveying, but the parent is not able to comprehend the importance of them. How would you address this? And what is your message to all the viewers that how to minimize this educator, uh, you know, um, parent educator conflict? Yes, Mr. Tiju. 
I think he's written, yeah. I'm not able to switch on my video and unmute myself. That's in the chat box. Oh, uh, can somebody help from the editor's team? Can somebody please help him uh, unmute? Meanwhile, we can, while uh, the tech team is looking at it, uh, Ms. Kavita, can you tell us something about, you know, how this can be minimized? Um, sometimes, you know, the parents, once they put the child to the school in the initial days or weeks, they are really anxious about how it goes, whether uh, they are comfortable. At that point, I wish, I feel that if there could be multiple orientations between the parent and the teacher, just to know the background and understand, because most of the time, uh, they are uh, initially, at least for a month or so, they are curious at any class for that matter. So this orientation and an understanding of, as ma'am rightly said, the background is essential, because uh, when there is a barrier, the communication is not going to happen, how much ever we try to put it across. So this orientation would be a source of breaking their barriers and understand. But here, I'm uh, only the educators would know the problem might be with the ratio of a student and teacher. When if there is a class of 20, I guess this would be possible. Uh, if there is going to be like more than 20 students, I'm not sure whether there will be an effective kind of a parent-teacher relationship possible. Uh, if it need to be effective, obviously, because only then, as ma'am said, when even if we form a WhatsApp group and when there is a regular communication, there should be some acknowledgement from the parent side too. Only then, whatever the teacher tries to communicate and the same when the parent tries to communicate to the teacher, the acknowledgement too matters a lot. It's more like a feedback given to any kind of communications that's being passed, be it about the behavior or be it about uh, the clause or uh, uh, a change in the learning pattern, whatever it may be. It's uh, What I'm trying to register here is not about a general communication about uh, exams or schedules or something. I'm here mentioning something about one-to-one -one specific. So in other way, I could even say something, if there is a behavior that needs to be appreciated, maybe that even could be communicated to the parents, which would really help the uh, parents understand them in a better way. So I guess orientation, and at the same time, to put it in a nutshell, not to uh, this communication with social media, because earlier days, there will be a diary in which we, every parent uh, is expected to give a signature so that we know that they have cross-checked the diary. But now, right. this communication should be in moderation. That is one thing. When we try right. to spam their inbox, you know, sometimes we do miss the important messages too. So moderation is the word here. And whatever needs to be communicated must be communicated. And that's what is my observation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. We have Mr. Tiju here. Uh, Mr. Tijo, I want to want you to elaborate on uh, this and also want you to give us some examples where he, they all said and done. There is a kind of power struggle. There is a kind of conflict which uh, that underlying conflict between the parent and the teacher uh, exists when it comes to the child. So what are those examples and how can we minimize this? Because they are dealing with each other on the day-to-day, -day, whether it is about the performance of the child or submission of the homework or about an event or so many a number of things. So what are your views on this? Yes, Mr. Tijo. <clears throat> Have we lost him again? Can I pass the question to someone else? Rubina, if you could uh, address this. Yeah. And I would I want you to give a very realistic answer, not a politically okay. correct answer because yeah. power struggle exists everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's very real actually. And in these times of open communication, I really welcome the suggestion from parents. Sometimes it's a, as you said, it, a conflict can build in. 
because they're two different kind of individuals coming from different background and both the educator and the teacher are wanting to benefit the child that the whole uh, the center of all activity is the child every child is unique in its learning in its background and of course so these situations do arise and they are very real they i i welcome such situations sometimes because then there's honest communication and i must tell you something here i've taught in pune i've taught in dubai and now i'm in charge of the school in gorakhpur but here it's most honest because parents are from ah. a different kind of background sometimes there's a language problem but initially they were very uncomfortable with me coming from outside but once they are comfortable you know the language barrier is gone and you make then they are very upright they can tell you okay this is it this is the problem ma'am ye nahi ho raha hai aisa hai humko ye problem hai at that time i have a feedback diary i really welcome this kind of feedback uh, unfortunately during these two years of pandemic it was little reduced but i noted down and it uh, the conflict and some of them will have something very genuine at the end of it we have to be very patient if it's for the benefit of the child in front of us but sometimes you have to you know, have this uh, that it's irrelevant sometimes it, but at, it's not that irrelevant it has to be sorted by the coordinators by delegating it first of all the principal as preeti said has to be this one pillar who is there to understand listen to all needs be comfortable you can go to this this person should be a go to person rather than one stiff necked person now in these modern times so since i am that kind of an educator and i studied in st paul's principal so i was like this you could go it should be it should be like all kind of things with students can also be discussed and communicated and parents should be welcome but with there should be a rule regulation with appointments but the voices should be heard yeah. and we should yeah. find problem if not then there are there are few will be and i also different. and i also feel that you know building on to what ms preeti said that if the parent chooses a school if, uh, when the parent sends the child to school there is a lot of aspiration that Very you know true. my child if was on level 1 or level 0 then there'll be some and when he comes to the parent teacher meeting the teacher starts with a set of complaints and how demotivated the parent can get so what i used to when i was a principal i would always insist that give a very very sandwich feedback because every parent comes with a lot of hope you know though he knows in heart of heart because the marks have already reflected the child behavior so but then you know there is a way of communication and i would like to take this opportunity and pass it to uh, ms preeti would you just very briefly encapsulate your thoughts on uh, this particular thing because the parent school partnership will only develop when there is a lot of trust and lot of respect for each other and that yes parent feels that i will be welcome and not that you know we know everything you don't know so right. ye aap thoda sa bataye hain bilkul of course they we are of course it's a partnership and as i said in the beginning in the partnership 50% we are responsible i truly believe 50% they are responsible mm. so when we have parents like this see first of all uh, uh, especially when we begin our kindergarten we have a day called the initiation day we initiate not only the students but also the parents that is the day when tell them we starting a new journey and you are taking this journey with us you will be with us along with your child so we create an environment of trust of comfort of openness that you are free to say anything if you have when we uh, make policy especially you know when we keep parent teachers meeting we don't don't randomly keep it like that we look at the convenience of the parent okay sunday is a day most of them are working and in this side of up saturday is not off so if we it's there's no weekend so we are everybody is working on a saturday so you can't have a meeting on saturday so we have to sacrifice the teachers have to sacrifice they have to come to school for a parent teacher meeting on a sunday because we realize and we accommodate so that maximum parents come and when we have these trouble parents we give them time slots we don't call them with the rest of the parents we give them a different time slot nobody likes to be told in front of other parents your child is not doing well and that is not done so it should be done in private one to one and whatever information we give we also tell you we tell them that this is the action you can take to improve 
so we have lots of parents who can't speak english and we know the parents won't be able to get the homework done but we have to help them we are not judging them and there are ways we can help them reading we ask the parents to you know we give reading homework separately to such students and ask the parents to send a voice note to the teacher so that we know that the parent has done the homework made the child read and we can monitor mm -hmm. through the voice notes over the week over the month what is the improvement so definitely definitely uh, and you know i believe in an education system which is inclusive so i have autistic children also in my school i never say no to them yes okay. i never say no to them so i like challenges i like children who are difficult who come from village background the parents are so hard working and they will never complain they are the best parents although they have language barrier but they are cooperative they can give their life for you they will do everything to benefit to give benefit to the child so such parents who come from disadvantaged backgrounds they have that you know that chaha that thing nahi we have to do yeah, so they do true. listen to the suggestions unlike other parents mm -hmm. so Very definitely nice. it's a challenge for us if we can make a difference there then we are a good school you can take mm -hmm. the cream you can take the best and give the best result it's easy but right. if you take these children who come from disadvantaged background special needs so many dyslexias dysgraphia dyscalculia we know but we have workshops for the parents for the teachers how to handle how to deal and that is the real beauty of education which is the inclusivity inclusiveness yes well yes. absolutely thank you so much do we have uh, mr tejo because we are losing him and uh, is mr tejo around Team Edudes, can I address a question to him? Is he around? I don't know. We've been losing him, and no, ma'am, oh. we are not. All right. Okay. Now another very important aspect. We we've, we've been talking about communication. That is one aspect. Now let me jump on to another aspect, which is parent involvement. so as we i'll start with uh, ms kavita and this question is something we all need to deliberate that how can and how much these are the two important things that communication is fine we've spoken about it that okay you know they need to do this or uh, uh, some suggestions by them how can we involve the parents in the education journey of the child ms kavita if you could start and then we could have mr martin speak briefly about it and then i'll move on to the other two principles yes ms kavita uh how in the sense like ma'am said we have different parents from different backgrounds so once in a while other than this parent teacher meeting there could be a forum involving parents who can also understand the methodologies and uh, have their suggestions or inputs if possible especially like as ma'am said when it's a, a multiple or a, a heterogeneous group sometimes there we may have some kind of inputs from the parents which would be of a great help in managing uh, so uh, that may be like different students from different backgrounds when i guess uh, other than this parents teacher association we can have some kind of a volunteering from the parents and a forum something like that could be formed and there could be regular meetings which could uh, really benefit the school in a different level okay thank you so, so much so as parents they may observe not only from their you know point of view because they'll be from very mm -hmm. different fields not only from the fe different fields right so their inputs might matter to a great extent so parents involvement that's why i said volunteer we can't like force mm -hmm. them and you know that we can't cross a limit to so that could be a volunteer forum but that should be alive again the word is moderation not like yeah. where and when it's needed okay so that would be a input that would help us like educating i'm sure i'm sure the involvement voluntary involvement and mr martin if you could very briefly talk about because we here talk about all all segments and the demographic various 
components in the demographic structure that way because you've been talking about rural so how their in parent involvement can happen and how would it help the teacher and school yes mr mat i totally agree with what ms kavita said right now but as far as the rural uh, milieu is concerned and also certain part of the urban areas while we are making while the curriculum has been planned i mean all of us have in the school has the parent teacher association you have parent representatives so i believe there needs to be a, a policy where parents input is taken in while you are designing the curriculum it is very essential very essential to set the context right because see there are some rural schools there are some urban urban schools there are some a level school pre middle schools so when you are setting the context the parent who's coming here with the child might have the monies might have the education whatever should understand the context that is being the outcome the ultimate outcome that is being delivered by the school so that platform where the parent becomes part of the curriculum design designing can be created as, as a policy can i bring in the NEP with your permission, Devanidhi. Very briefly, so very briefly, yes. So, NEP now is an empowering tool, and for a change, it is an empowering tool for the students. Sure. So there's a lot of unlearning that has to be done on behalf of the schools now, and how they approach this. Yeah. So for that, you need to open up your doors for a lot of collaboration. on the parent front on the student front on the community front very good come up with what you want to deliver because this is now empowering the students not the thank you so much i think very brief very briefly and a very very uh, important aspect which mr martin raised is that which is very innovative something as he said you know relearning and redesigning so taking parent inputs in designing of curriculum and which is going to be very revolutionary but which is very very essential i think very well said uh, mr martin i really respect your thoughts on this because to parents who we always say one of the stakeholders you know the various stakeholders in the education teaching learning process but they are the most passive ones they are the most they are that a uh, component which is only at the receiving end so they are only receiving the feedback they are receiving the you know information they are receiving the notifications but the involvement is missing thank you so much i would also ask, like to ask both our principals and ask them for some suggestive methods to uh, involve the parents and make them from passive to active uh, participants in this play ji so uh, let's begin first by uh, rubina and then we move on okay. to ms preet Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite part of the whole panel discussion because uh, we had a beautiful experience with our parents when we started an environment nature club here called lemon grass in cooperation okay. and we got in volunteer okay. parents so they are uh, so surprised gorakhpur always surprises me and the inputs which came came in with the exhibitions we held the exhibitions and garage sales and we did recycling workshops and we got talent from the parent talent, uh, talent pool of the parents making crafts making doing so many things and soon it was a family thing and the parents were involved and we got them uh, they became more confident we came to know them a little better and we all through them we came to know the child also felt very good you know the parent is involved so this was an informal ice breaker kind of a thing through we all work for environment we build a community where the parent and the teacher and the school works together and we do something some volunteer work for the betterment of the city cleaning the city working for the environment that was one thing i really and uh, felt good about and of course this new education policy i really find it very path breaking i agree with mr martin the child is feeling so empowered for once the child and the parent is not 
somewhere behind, he can have a much bigger hand in planning the whole curriculum and feeling, you know, that, okay, I'm on the right path. I have my goal written and I can be an achiever. Every child is unique. I really find it very path breaking that way. So those- It's a very, it's a very, very robust document and a very futuristic. And very I think uh, we all need to, because I held you back because I would keep you, I would call you another uh, webinar on national education policy and I would want you to present your views on that. I'm sure they would be very, very evolved and in, uh, you know uh, innovative. So yes, the whole idea, uh, and we are all trying to, we are all applauding the national education policy and it is challenging in situation like I think, who would better know than Mr. Martin because he is there in the real India. I'm sitting in Gurgaon. I have the most progressive schools, so I really can't relate to the problems in, uh, you know, tier two cities. And uh, Mr. Martin goes further deeper down in the rural uh, areas where the vision is to, you know, empower the whole of the country. To uh, Ms. Preeti, now we would like you to also suggest that how is the child, the school, and the parent going to you know benefit with the active school parent involvement you, with your very powerful bullet points uh, please <laughs> help <laughs> uh, well i would like to say that you know the best start for parent involvement is when they enroll in kindergarten when they come as fresh and early that's the best time to because you know these are new parents they're very excited yeah. for their child's journey uh, they want to do everything and be a part of everything. So, you know, you should strike it, strike when the iron is hot. So that's the right time. And that's the time when we involve them in a lot of activities, which will set the trajectory of learning in future. So we mm -hmm. have things like activity calendars, where we have 365 days. We have one little activity that the parent and the child does together. Very simple, you know, laying the table, counting the number of plates, going on a nature walk, collecting leaves. So what this does is this builds a strong relationship between the parent and the child. You know, parents expect, you know, uh, school ja hai, bachcha education, ke chalo, copy kitab nikalo, ABCD likho. That is not the way to start. First, build a camaraderie. First, get down to do activities together. Build a relationship. And this relationship is built by doing fun things. So the child is learning something very important, counting or colors or numbers, but in a fun way. So I really believe that, you know, best uh, way, best way and best years to involve parents is when they enroll in the early years program. Because later on, we find, you know, a lot of reluctance in parents to be a part. You know, they leave everything to the school. So, you know, building them up in the early years helps the parent to rest because they've already developed soft skills. They have a routine. They know what to do. And that slowly, you know, helps them in school life later on. So that's my view. Yeah, because uh, very rightly said, and I feel that parents uh, need to be a party to this whole process because if they are part of this, not just in terms of communication, you know, uh, they will have a deeper understanding and involvement in the child's development of his cognitive, social, emotional attributes. Now, uh, I would, in the end, because we are running short of time, and in the end, I would just would like to hear uh, Mr. Martin's views on that, all this discussion about parent involvement and about from communication to involvement, like a school parent collaboration. Do you see that it will going to impact the system, education system, will it kind of fulfill somewhere the vision of the national education policy and how? Very briefly, sir. Thank you, ma'am. The future is of startups, ma'am. You will not have to wait 
till you're 24 to finish a job, finish your education and then pick up a job. Very soon in our lifetime, you will see within a year, two or three years, 16 years old, 17 years old, becoming independent. And that is the power of the NEP. And that is the power of the skill development. And that is the power of the new education policy that has been put in here. So yes, this new education policy, the only bit that's going to be challenging, because the, the only group that will find it challenging would be the schools. Because mm. they have to unlearn everything. Yes. The parents will come up with a whole lot of opinions. So, okay, there will be angry opinions, confused opinions. Now, your role as a teacher, as principals, would be to model those opinions and channelize those opinions. That is what I, what I, what I mean when I say give context to your evaluation. Your evaluation, your outcome should be well defined. So, whoever enrolls with you, understands that by the end of so many years, this is going to be the outcome that my child is going to achieve. And that outcome obviously is, there's going to be a lot of ask from the parents and the student. And your delivery, yes, and delivery will be molded according to that ask because max, most of this ask will be an informed ask. Very well said that, you know, it cannot be now the whole horizon, the whole uh, af uh, outcome of uh, learning is changing. And uh, to that extent, we really will have to, you know, redefine, reinvent and uh, redesign the all, not just the processes, but also recondition our mindset to the paradigm shift that education is, uh, you know, seeing. And it's a very compulsive thing. It can't be a top uh, bottom kind of thrust. It is a revolution, it's outcome of a revolution that is taking place. And we are all forced to be part of that revolution, whether we like it or we don't like it. So as he said very rightly that it will be 16-7 with the kind of skill development that the policy is focusing on, there'll be a very, very different demands set on schools, set on principals, set on uh, teachers. Of course, we keep talking about parents have to change their perspective. And I think some of the parents are, uh, you know, changing themselves by uh, letting the child take the reins of his decision-making of this career and other aspects in their own hands. With this, we come to this wonderful discussion, though this was such a beautiful topic that it could go yes. on and on, but we are restricted because we also have a segment where we have some audience questions. Do we have any questions at Team Edudis at, uh, here? from the audience, if you could see in the, I can see lots of uh, chats in the box. And uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Arun saying that some parents may have suggestions regarding the methodology adopted by the school in the delivery of education. Should the parents be considered as customers and their views satisfied or ignored. How do you create a structure to satisfy the parents' concerns? Beautiful question. And I would like our uh, panelists to please address this question. So Ms. Preeti, would you like to take it up? Absolutely. We are open. The schools are open to suggestion of the parents regarding methodology. Of course, why not? But yes, I don't consider them customers. I don't like that word. They are our partners, they are not customers. We are not providing a service of that kind, you know. It's an initiative, it's a, a service. We are providing a beautiful service of education which demands respect for teachers, for those who are providing trust. And we have equal trust and faith on our parents. So yes, with all trust and faith, I will incorporate. I will take the suggestions. We are always open to that. That's how we progress. And sometimes they might have a better suggestion. Why not? If it works, we'll accept it. Absolutely. There is a similar question by the audience, which was registered that 
you know the post uh, post pandemic they are saying they are, uh, we want to the involvement of parents has increased will it remain the same that's what the question is that the involvement uh, you know they've tasted the blood now and they've tasted it and now they really are involved in the the process so would that involvement remain would it become limited and how would the school look at it ms rubina could you just uh, answer this if possible i hope so it remains because uh, during these two years it was a uh, revelation the parent involvement has been great and i hope so it remains that as we as preeti said we are open to suggestions and suddenly parents have come out and open and delivered and build a relationship and i hope so to see it happen even though the children are now in school of course the structure and the appointments and the time slots have to be seen into how and when we approach them how they they join in but i hope so it remains it's been a good journey for me at least i think so it's it's been good thank you so much i'm sure the a uh, person who's asked would be satisfied we have another question and uh, that's very nice because when our viewers ask uh, post questions shows the popularity of our discussions and that it reinforces in us the confidence that we are doing some good work and we are on the right path so uh, ms vijay lakshmi menon to everyone uh, is asking i just want to know whether over indulgence with the parents by some teachers is healthy now what that means if mr martin or ms kavita would whoever wants to take it up that mm. over indulgence with parents i mean i'm sure she wants to say something else she wants to say that the parents are constantly knocking the doors of the teachers for everything yes uh, mr martin what you say say uh over indulgence in anything is not healthy let alone the... yes. so as long as they adhere to the rules and no yeah. they no it is going to be a healthy one they understand their rules and they know their limitations that's fine i don't think over indulgence maybe sometimes teachers do they do involve and get too friendly with parents maybe she wants to address that i'm not very sure like what's she really addressing it is the man new work and uh, about to say something yes please continue so uh, i agree with what mr kavita said i was about to actually elaborate on that only uh, it's very essential for a teacher and a parent to understand their roles because it, even though you are collaborating these are professional roles very and true. there has to be you know then you need to keep that maintain that the relationship which is uh, obviously formed because of the child in between so the decorum of the relationship needs to be kept in place and it has to be managed in a very in a in a decent uh, measured words and mode of communication true so with this we come to the end of the session and the deep dial there is a need for a deep dialogue to redefine the purpose of schools can only occur if parent involvement as mr martin said that to the extent that parents are involved in the designing the choice when any pe is providing the choice the involvement of parents in designing the curriculum so the involvement of uh, families and teachers and schools where all the stakeholders have an equal voice and they bring their individual expertise on the table thereby raise the bar and the level of uh, education that is being provided with this we come to the end and with the bottom of my heart i thank each and every of our each one of our esteemed panelists mr martin i'm very apologetic i in the end got to know that there was some uh, miscommunication and uh, thank you so much for joining in but please stay tuned we are just about to start a small video about our next session and about our up coming mega webinar it is first of its kind a virtual platform where 10 experts or subject matter experts come together 
to uh, empower the students, equip the students to how to handle the term two board exam, the what, how, and clear their doubts. So please encourage your students to take advantage of this mega webinar, which is going to be held on the 9th of April between 3 to 6 p.m. We have subject matter experts coming in and speaking to the students to how to undertake the board exam. May we please have the video uh, viewing? Thank you so much once again and please encourage your students to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity mr martin this is a free of cost webinar please encourage everyone to take advantage of this we have a limited platform of 1000 students so that it would be on the first come first serve basis the students will be led into the breakout rooms with the expert and one on one they can have a discussion with our experts with this we come to an end thank you so much it was a pleasure hosting each one of you thank you so thank much, you so much for the opportunity. thank you thank you devyani thank you thank you thank you Thank you all. Thank you, Devani, ma'am. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye.